Truth is a risky proposition. It's the nature of mediocre human beings to believe that lies are necessary, they serve a purpose, that truth is subversive, that candor is dangerous, that the very scaffold of communal life is supported by lies. And this week's opening quote comes from Anne Rice. Welcome to Surviving the Matrix. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Maxwell Egan. It's a pleasure to be with you once again, and I will be your host for the next hour. All the world is a stage, ladies and gentlemen, it really is. And when you look at our political and social systems, what you find is that these systems are supported by a scaffold of lies. And even when trying to find a way out of the dilemma we find ourselves in, many people seem to believe that it needs to be carefully managed via a scaffold of lies as well, or that's the way it seems anyway. And what I'm referring to here is the recent bombing campaign we've seen restarted against the sovereign nation of Syria by Trump and his cohorts in the United Kingdom. The lies these politicians have both told to go and start bombing that country. And do pay close attention to these bombing campaigns, folks, because if the United States and British government really wanted to take out Assad and stop him from murdering his own people like we're being told he is doing, they would surely go and bomb Assad's palace and bomb the government buildings and take the government out of action. But they don't do that. They go and bomb civilian areas the way they always do. And make no mistake about it, folks, what we are seeing in Syria is not a war to repel any gas attack or to protect the people. What the war in Syria is, is a war for greater Israel. It's always been a war for greater Israel. That's why they're bombing all of the civilian infrastructure and destroying all the most ancient regions of Syria, such as Aleppo, because they are destroying any trace of ancient Muslim infrastructure to pave the way for greater Israel. The entire war is based on a lie, not the less of which this latest incursion is based on a lie. But not just that, not just the lies that these people have told in order to prop up their fake war, but also the way the response to this attack has been received by people and most especially the response by many elements we've seen within the independent media, many of whom who believe Trump is playing some sort of 12D chess now. It's gone beyond 4D chess, folks. It's now something like 10D or 12D chess. And they seem to be almost falling over themselves to concoct these elaborate plans as to why Trump is doing this to benefit everybody and to justify his actions. And it's quite amazing. I mean, here is Trump bombing another country and everyone is seeking to justify his actions, saying it's all part of a secret agenda, a secret war he's waging against the deep state. So... I guess that means Theresa May is one of the good guys as well, and she must be bombing Syria in order to attack these deep state assets. And I guess the Prime Minister of France must also be secretly operating to wipe out the deep state in the US. And here we have Trump following the same agenda that's always been followed by all presidents and doing exactly the same thing that all previous presidents have done. But according to the independent media, because it's Trump, it's all part of this secret plan that he's got going on and that this is all some big move to bring the troops home. But of course, it has to be done that way because the masses can't know what's going on because it's all super secret operations against the deep state and all this stuff we're hearing coming forth from QAnon. Again, it's the same concept that in order to gain freedom, that freedom needs to be supported via a scaffold of lies. Inasmuch as the governments need to pretend they're going to bomb Syria for the sake of bombing Syria when really they're attacking deep state assets and the Syrian government knows and has moved all these people out and all sorts of stuff. All this rubbish that I'm hearing from elements within the independent media who really don't know because they're not there in Syria themselves and they're getting their information from QAnon, and we're all being told that this is a very delicate operation to remove the deep state apparatus from Syria, and that we can all expect it to be home and hosed, and everybody in the clear, and the troops to be brought home by around about November the 11th. And that's what we're hearing from many of these sources, folks. So it's all good, we've got this, just sit back, don't do anything until November 11th, and spend the next 
seven months doing absolutely nothing to combat the smart system, doing absolutely nothing to regain freedom, doing absolutely nothing to factor in the reality that the world is run by criminals and that your government is in fact a criminal enterprise through and through, right to its core, doing nothing to address the rollout of the smart meters around you, doing nothing to address the rollout of the 5G active denial system that's been put in place in your communities, doing nothing but watching the show believing that Trump's got your back and that all this bombing in Syria is designed to bring the troops home so that we can take out the deep state and don't worry about the smart grid and the cashless society. Don't worry about the Chinese one belt, one road system. We got this. Great message coming from QAnon. And it's quite amazing to see how much of the independent media is just lapping it up, hook, line and sinker and grabbing the popcorn and sitting back and waiting to be saved. But as I said, folks, all the world is a stage. And when I say that, what I mean is that all the world is a stage. And all the world is not the United States. And what you see with all this QAnon stuff is all Americentric thinking. It's all about what happens if we do this and do that and how it affects the government in the United States. It isn't about how it affects anything else. Now, you could bring down the entire deep state apparatus in the United States. It's not going to affect what's happening in England. It's not going to affect what's happening in Europe. It's not going to affect what's happening in Australia, in Japan, in China, in a myriad of other countries around the world. What it's going to affect is what is happening in the United States. And the United States is not the center of the universe. And the United States has outlived its usefulness as a major financial power on this earth. You know, it may be a major military force, and it still is, but it's kind of dilapidated. The military force is dilapidated. The weapons are kind of substandard. A lot of them are, whether you want to admit that or not. A lot of the weapons that the U.S. use are substandard. For example, M16s and a lot of the weapons that they use in the desert just simply don't function in that way. That's why you find that all the people in the desert use Kalashnikovs and things like that, because they're just far better. And the military arm of the United States is spread very thin. It's all out all over the world. So it's kind of a big mishmash. It's very, very powerful on the surface. But under a real threat, the United States would find it very difficult to defend its own shores. Were it not for the fact that the citizens are armed. That's the major thing it's got going for it. But when you look at the United States as a major military force it really does have quite some standing but as a financial power it no longer has any real standing at all because it's so much in debt and you've got to understand how the world works the world is run by finance the world is run by the economic interests countries are marginalized countries are controlled via control of the financial system that's how it's always been and whether people want to admit it or not, America's days as a major controlling financial interest are virtually over and they're going to be gone very soon. And so in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter what happens to the US government. And all this QAnon stuff is all focused at the US government as if it matters what happens there. And it doesn't. So much of the independent media are focused on this thinking this is going to change things and it's not. You know, bring down the deep state. Well, what's that going to do? Because the deep state couldn't exist if the state wasn't there to cloak it. And deep state will always exist as long as the state is there to cloak it. That's the way it works. You know, the deep state isn't the problem. The problem is the state itself. Because the state will always create the deep state by default, simply by its existence. And how people can just continue to swallow the lies of the state is just beyond me. It really is. I mean, when Trump's there yelling and screaming, saying, how dare Assad terrorize his own people and we need to go in and bomb them to stop them being terrorized. I mean, how can people swallow this? And it's the United States saying this, screaming out about human rights. I mean, for pity's sake, folks, this is a country with the largest prison population in the history of the world. It's just decimated country after country after country. I mean, Iraq, Libya, Afghanistan. Looking back, El Salvador. I mean, so many countries that the United States has gone in and obliterated. Look what happened in Bosnia and Syria. All the stuff that happened there as a result of Hillary Clinton. Look what happened in Iran with the result of the coup of Mosaddegh. I mean, it goes on and on and on. 
I mean, it's just been a never-ending war fest ever since World War II. The United States has gone out and obliterated so many countries, and it has terrorised its own people so much. How dare the president go on national television and claim to have an inkling of care about human rights while he's supporting the crimes of Israel, supporting the incarceration and the imprisonment and the illegal siege of Gaza Strip. I mean, it's absolutely absurd that anybody could swallow this stuff and think that he's playing 12D chess to bring the troops home. He's not. He's following the same agenda that all presidents have followed, and there's this entire theatre of conflict happening to distract people from what's going on on the ground right beneath their feet right now, what's going on in all countries, all countries that are participating in this charade, the same thing's going on in all the countries, and that's the smart grid, the cashless grid, the internet of things, and the social crediting system that will soon follow it, that we are now seeing being perfected in China, that will soon be rolled out around the world once China comes online with the One Belt, One Road system. And all this is happening because people are just failing to pay attention. They're buying into the theatrics of the whole thing and they're just not looking at what's happening around them. And they're failing to realise the power that they each have because, you know, ultimately, folks, this whole battle comes down to a personal battle. It comes down to people doing the inner work. And this is stuff I've talked about so many times. I mean, I did years of shows talking about people doing the inner work, how important it is to love yourself and to appreciate yourself to the point that you can appreciate others around you. Because you can. You know, once you really see the value of yourself and the power that you have, you do learn to appreciate your community around you and you do want to help the people around you. And then life begins to work for you once you do that. You know, and if we can apply all these spiritual understandings to the society we live in, we can change things very easily. All we have to do is apply human values to our thinking, human values to our everyday actions, and we can change the world because the government gets away with what it's doing and all these theatrics and all the stuff that happens because we just fail to apply these human values to them. You know, even looking back and waiting to be saved, it's all very well watching the whole theatrics of QAnon and thinking all this deep state stuff's going on, but what are you doing in your everyday life? To improve things there. I mean, just sitting back and watching the theatre, but then you go back and interact with the real world outside. And how are you treating the people around you? Are you appreciating them the way you would want to be appreciated? Do you appreciate yourself enough to really see these people for what they are? And realise that they're all in this little inner battle as well. They're all scared. They're all wondering what's going on. They may appear to be calm on the surface, but many of them have got all this stuff going on inside their heads. They don't really know what's happening. They're scared of their surroundings. They're scared of not having a future. They're scared of being able to make ends meet. There's always that little drip of fear going on in the back of everybody's mind. Fear of paying the bills. You know, this whole constant state of scarcity that we're kept in because of this system. Everyone's too scared to think outside the box. Everyone's too scared to really stand up against their government because they're scared of what may happen to them. Because they don't have the support of the community around them where they to do so. That's the problem. Because we don't appreciate ourselves enough to appreciate them. And so they don't appreciate themselves enough to appreciate us. And that's the way it works. It's a vicious cycle, divide and conquer. And that's what this whole system has done. This whole system is based on fear-based mind control, all of it. And it's got to the extent that we are now fearful of our neighbours. We're fearful of the people around us simply because they think differently to us, or they look differently to us, or they dress differently to us listen to different music or vote for a different political party or barrack for a different football team, watch a different TV show. You know, it's ridiculous. And the whole thing is divide and conquer. That is the greatest tool that's ever been used against us and it's all because we do not know ourselves. Because everything about this society prevents us from ever finding ourselves. You know, the whole education system is designed to do that. The show that I did last week, Your Government is a Terrorist, I did that show just to try to help people understand that this entire system is based on terrorism. It's based on fear-based mind control. The whole education system, the whole scholastic system, the academic system, the business system, all of it. The political system, the legal system, it's all terrorism. It's all the subtle use of fear-based mind control, the entire Western infrastructure. That's what it's based on. That's why it doesn't work. You know, it works for them, but it doesn't work for us. Now, that's why when people look at the system and they try to find a way out of it and they think, well, how can we do all these things that will help mankind? They have all these ideas and they try to put them into place. They never get them in place because of fear-based mind control and the subtle use of terrorism. Because that's what our entire system is based on. 
You know, the world's run by criminals and they know what they're doing. They put all this whole system in place in order to coerce us, in order to mould us into what they want and to keep us fearful of ever really discovering ourselves and standing in that. You know, just standing up and saying, hey, I have value. They just don't want people to think that. No, you don't have value. You're just a little pleb. Your government has value. Do what you're told. We'll make you safe. We'll keep you safe because the world's a dangerous place out there and you just couldn't survive without us. And all these governments collude together to put that same fear into their population. Then they all work together to manufacture the old war here and there to make it look like they actually really do mean what they're saying and we actually do need these people. But you wouldn't have any wars at all if it wasn't for government. You wouldn't have any wars at all if it wasn't for the state. You wouldn't have all these dead people everywhere and all this suffering and all this stuff that we see were it not for government. You know, and whatever excuse they're using, you don't go and bomb a country to play 12D chess to bring the truth home. It doesn't matter. You're dropping bombs on someone. You're dropping bombs on another country. And you don't have to create this web of lies to bring the truth out. This is stuff I've heard from people for years. Oh, they're preparing to tell us the truth. They've already booked the airtime to tell us the truth. Disclosure's coming. This is coming and that's coming. And they just have to prepare the public in the right way to prepare the ground. You don't have to prepare anything, folks. You don't have to prepare people to tell the truth. You just tell the truth. And we're not seeing that. You don't have to play 12D chess to tell the truth. You just call things for what they are. What, do you think the people can't handle it? What, are you serious? You really think people are that stupid that they just can't handle to hear the truth? I think they can. If it came from the right source, if it came from someone high up like Donald Trump, if he really wanted to tell the truth, he would just tell the truth. What's Trump said about 9-11? Nothing. What's he said about this whole smart grid? Nothing. What's he said about ISIS, the fact that ISIS is all funded by the West and getting logistic support from Israel in the Golan Heights? Nothing. What's he said about anything that's real? What's he said about anything that has made a difference to your life on the ground where you live? Absolutely nothing. All it's been is rhetoric and theatre and all of these secret backroom deals that we're hearing from QAnon. And really, when you step back and look at the whole big picture, it's just new boss, same as the old boss. And the same agenda goes marching steadily forward, only it's actually gone forward a lot quicker than it could have gone forward had people not fallen back in love with the state simply because they believed that there was a truther in the president's chair when his actions themselves have proven him to be anything but... You know, people are always looking for the solution in something external. They're always looking for government to come and save them or for someone to lay out a plan for them. I get it all the time. Max, what's your solution? They can't see the forest for the trees. They can't see that the solution is themselves. You know, the solution is doing the inner work. This is something that I discovered years and years ago. I mean, I was my own worst enemy when I was a child. When I was a younger man, I was my own worst enemy. I really was. But then I realized it was me that was creating all of that. It was my failure to take responsibility for myself, my failure to even realize who and what I am. That was the problem all along. I mean, I knew I was something. I knew that this world was completely wrong and that I was probably born onto the wrong world. I mean, that's what I thought from when I was a very small child. But I kind of took that on and it became a chip on my shoulder for many years. I couldn't handle the world that I lived in. I thought it was all messed up and there was nothing I could do about it because I didn't know my own power. I didn't realize that what I have to do is look after myself and look out for myself. I mean, I should have realized it much earlier because obviously no one had really looked out for me or looked after me up to that point. But then I started to realize that it was all about me. It was all about what I did with the experience I was having. And people would come at you with airs of authority or airs of this or airs of that and pretend they knew what they were doing and I just wouldn't ever wear it. I used to question them all the time. Why they thought they could do that better than anybody else. Why they believe they have authority over people. And it didn't go down too well with a lot of people but it caused me to stand my ground. I mean anything I saw anybody doing I used to think well how hard can it be? They're doing it so obviously it can be done so it can't be that hard to do. So I'd put my mind to it, and usually I'd be able to do it. And I found that I became pretty good at anything I tried to do. Some people used to say to me when I was younger, it's ridiculous, Max, you have more talent in your little finger than most people have in their whole bodies, and yet you can't get your life together. And it's because I couldn't function in the system. I couldn't function in that whole economic thing that we've got going on here. I just looked at it and thought, this is a complete mess, and all I can do to function within it is to exploit the people around me, and I can't do that. 
I can't stand in a shop and sell people things they don't need without telling them that they really don't need this and ask them why they're buying it in the first place. You know, I can't create something, some little trinket or some gimmick that people might want and make money out of. Well, I can't even write a book and sell it to people because I think information should be free and I should be able to give that book away to people. You know, I can't do the things that you're required to do to survive in this economic system. And people used to say to me, how can you have so much talent and not be able to get by in this world? Why aren't you a millionaire? And it's because I may have intelligence, but I just can't manage the exploitation part of it. I just can't do commerce. My mind doesn't work that way. I just can't see how things have an economic value attached to them. I just can't see it. I don't know how to attach an economic value to things that I create. My mind simply doesn't work that way. I just can't view my friends as something to profit from. I can't view people as a commodity that I need to survive in life. I've just never been able to do that. I've never been able to adopt that mindset. And I think that it is that mindset that causes all the problems. I mean, even last week when I said that if we're going to have any sort of social system at all that requires that we use electricity, that requires we be on the grid, then that electricity should be supplied for free. Someone commented on one of my videos and said, oh my God, that's socialism. I thought, well, why is it socialism? It seems to be common sense to me. They're saying, well, no, if it's supplied by government for free, then someone must be exploited for that to be happening. Well, no, you could be paying these people a wage to run the electricity work the way they are now. You could be paying them a better wage than they are now. I mean, the government is spending 100,000 times more that on war every year that we don't need to have. You could funnel some of these resources into managing basic infrastructure for our societies and things would be a lot better. I think if you had free electricity and free medicals and all this sort of stuff, things would be a lot better. People wouldn't need to be in this state of scarcity they're always in. And that's not socialism. That's just common sense. I mean, if we're going to have these social systems where the government forces you to be on the electrical grid, then the government should cover the cost of that grid. Of course they should. That should be their responsibility. Same as medicals and keeping their population healthy should be their first responsibility. All of this stuff should be the first responsibility of people who are employed to manage infrastructure because that's what we employ them to do. That's all we need government for. We don't need it for all this other stuff. Now, we could manage our own police force. It would be better off if we did. We wouldn't have these violent thugs of black Kevlar that we've got now that are just there to protect government and enforce government legislation and make sure you abide by the government rules. They're not there to make sure society is kept safe and out of harm and to provide remedy when that harm is caused. They're there to make sure you walk between the lines and do what you're told. And that's not what we originally created a police force for. You can have all of this stuff in place without government. We don't need these people at all. You know, and if we have any form of government in place at all, then it needs to be those who are responsible for managing infrastructure in the way we require it to be managed to have a strong, vibrant, healthy society, a progressive society that's moving forward, that's helping the people be all that they can be, helping the people within that society reach the fullest of their creative potential so we can create something spectacular on this earth, which we could very easily do if we had any form of responsible management, but we don't. We have a criminal class who manufactures wars to make us believe we're under threat all the time, uses subtle forms of terrorism to keep us under control, and locks down our society and removes our rights at every opportunity under the guise of keeping us safe from the other guys. It's a scam. It's such an absolute scam, and... We could change things so quickly, folks, if we rediscovered ourselves. That's been the message all along. You know, and however many hundreds of ways I've tried to say it, it really has been the message right since day one. And it does get a little frustrating. I mean, it does. After doing the shows for so many years and seeing how easily we could change things, it does get a little frustrating that people can't see it. And even when they do see it, they tend to say, oh, gee, I get it. I see my personal power. I get it all now, but what are we going to do? And then they are back in square one again. They just leapfrogged over themselves and landed back where they started. They just don't really seem to get it at all. Well, I guess some people do, but, but it does get a little frustrating, folks, because if people were to participate simply in being themselves and applying themselves to the world around them, the world would change very quickly. But even in saying that, I mean, you say that to people and they say, well, what do you mean? I don't get it. And I know what you mean. It's kind of a, an esoteric statement to make. But 
I really don't know how else to say it. You know, I've, I've said it so many ways on so many shows and, you know, it's knowing who and what you are and knowing that this world is just people and that all people have equal value. I mean, that's the thing with the English language. We're so limited in our ability to be able to convey any spiritual or real self-empowerment understandings to people because we're limited by our language simply because the words to convey the understandings that I feel inside simply don't exist in English. And so we're very much constrained, even attempting to present the information to people, which is why I stick to very simple language on the shows. I try not to over-intellectualize anything. And keep it so it's all around the kitchen table talk because I think that helps for people to be able to understand things if you can keep it simple. But again, even in doing so, we're limited by the lack of words we have in our vocabulary to explain the concepts that I'm feeling inside. It's the way they did with 1984 when they removed all the words from the language that pertain to anything such as rebellion. Now, they've done that with English as well. They've removed lots of words from our language so that we don't have any words to convey the concepts we wish to express. And we know certain things inside that we simply don't know how to voice because the words to voice them simply don't exist in our language because they've been purposefully removed. A good example of that, as I said last week again, is the word that I often use, cacistocracy, which is defined as governance by the worst elements of society who govern exclusively in their own interests to the permanent detriment of all other classes, which is what we have. And that is a word that was removed from the dictionary about 100 years ago. Another word that goes along with that that was also removed is the word blabbergoggy. And blabbergoggy is an interesting word because a blabbergoggy is defined as an evil environment. And basically, it's an environment where you're forced to do what you're told. A blabbergoggy. And that's what we have. We have a cacistocracy that has created a blabbergoggy. And no one knows it because there are not words in the language to convey these real understandings for people because these words have been deliberately removed from our vocabulary and you've got to wonder how many other words have been removed how many words that do convey these spiritual concepts and convey the essence of true freedom have been removed from our vocabulary so we simply don't know how to convey these concepts to people which is why we run around so lost and attempting to find the way out of this prison not realizing that we each hold the key and we do, folks, and it really is that simple because each one of us holds the key to our own prison and that key lies in the discovery, the rediscovery of who and what we are. But folks, I think we've reached break time here, so I'll leave it there for now and we'll go and have a break. Thank you for joining me on the air today. It's always a pleasure to have your company and I'll speak to you again in a few minutes. Don't go away. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So what we're living in here, more than anything, is a prison of our minds, a prison for our minds, almost like they said in The Matrix. It's people's unquestioning belief in authority, people's fear of ever thinking outside of the box or speaking their voice, letting their voice be heard. And what we're seeing with the rollout of the smart grid and the 5G and the social crediting system that's going with it is this type of mind control and thought control is going to be taken to the next level if we don't pay attention to it and stop this being rolled out. You know, it's very difficult for people to want to voice their opinions now. It's very difficult for people to even be prepared to think outside of the box because they're too scared to. They're scared of what their peers may think about them. But when that becomes a judgment that is performed by an AI because all your devices in your home are listening to what you're saying, then you get scared to say anything, even in the comfort of your own home. How are you going to sit there and research and read esoteric magazines and discuss them over the kitchen table? You may say something that your clock radio didn't like you saying, and it may affect your social credit points. So it's going to curtail human thinking and human expression to the most ridiculous degree if we allow this smart system to come online. As I said, it's already curtailed to a ridiculous degree, but it's going to get even worse where people will be literally scared to think anything outside the box, anything outside the normal, 
most especially scared to voice that opinion. And when it gets to the point where thoughts can be monitored, which is very much where we're going, you can look at what they're doing with the gaming community. This is a lot of what the gaming community is about. It's about developing interaction between humans and machines. It isn't just about gaming. It's about developing these tools. So when all this comes in place, they're able to actually monitor people's thoughts and it becomes a danger to even think an unpure thought, if that's what you want to call it, then what's human society going to be like at that point? You know, there'll be no humanity left in society at that point. Everybody will be forced to do exactly what they're told under threat of punishment, under threat of losing social credits, and under threat of being ostracized. This is how they will be able to reduce the population to 500 million, ladies and gentlemen. Now, everyone's thought it's going to be some big virus they're going to spread or whatever, they'll be able to limit the working population to 500 million by putting the rest of the people in jails, just putting them in the smart prison by slowly ostracizing them and squeezing them out of the system. And if they can't do that, well, they can easily set up active denial zones in certain areas in cities. They can cordon off slum areas. You could have areas like Gaza Strip happening in New York and L.A., the homeless section in the centre of LA, they could simply cordon all that off with an active denial system so that people can't leave. There's an electromagnetic fence around the area. They can do that with the 5G grid because it does contain this active denial capability. There's all sorts of possibilities of what can happen with this smart grid that's rolling out if we don't pay attention. And the whole thing really comes down to a loss of self, a loss of what it means to be a human. As I said, this mistaken belief in authority, this sheep-like mentality that most of the human race has undergone. And it may be a sad thing to say to call people sheeple, but really, when you look at people, how they're so easily led, and when you look at society in general, it's really what we've got. It's a people farm, as I keep saying. And the problem with it is that the people within the farm simply can't see that they are the ones that hold the key to their own salvation. They hold the key to their own lock because the whole farm only exists because they comply with it. They believe that they need to go along with what the government tells them to do because of the fear-based mind control system and the subtle use of terrorism that they've undergone throughout their entire lives. And they're just scared to ever say no. And beyond even scared to say no, they're sometimes scared to even question why the order is being given to them. You know, scared to even say yes conditionally. Yeah, I'll do that, but why are you asking me to do that to begin with? What's this all about? You know, why do you believe you have a right of ownership over me? Whoever asked that? You know, why do you do what people tell you to do all the time when they don't own you? Why do you act like a slave and then claim you live in a free world? Because most people do that. They simply roll over on command and then say, I'm free. And it doesn't really make a lot of sense when you look at it. But you ask people that question and they say, well, I do what I'm told because if I don't, I'll get in trouble or I'll get arrested. And yet they can say that, but then they don't realize that what they're doing is that they are complying with terrorism. They are negotiating with terrorists. I thought we were told we weren't supposed to do that by the government. The government says we will not negotiate with terrorists, and yet the people are forced to negotiate with terrorists all the time, every time they negotiate with an agent of the state because they are forced to negotiate under intimidation and under fear of punishment. They are forced to negotiate due to violence or the threat of violence that has been carried out against them as a means of coercion, which is the dictionary definition of terrorism. You know, and that's why it all comes down to doing the inner work. It all comes down to realizing who and what you are and realizing what the people who are inflicting themselves upon you are because they're just people like you and they have no right to do what they do. The only reason they get away with it is because you agree to let them get away with it because you never question. And if you do question, you stand up and you get knocked on the head. So that makes you scared. So you never do because you don't have the support of your community around you. So... The most important thing anybody can do to establish freedom is to discover themselves to the point that they can respect people around them and get to know their neighbours, get to know your community, so that the greater community can stand together and call this system out for what it is. And this is something that I've said right since the beginning, right since the very first interview that I did back in 2008, you know, before I even had the radio show. 
This is what I've been saying the whole time. The most important thing we have is the power of community. You know, the, the way that we are always at each other's throats and arguing amongst each other, the way that independent media and the so-called truth movement is a mishmash of infighting, this is the biggest asset that the government uses against us because our greatest asset is the people around us. And yet we alienate the people around us. We ostracize anybody who thinks differently to us and we spread rumors about them and all sorts of stuff that people do in the independent media. Anybody who thinks different to anybody else must be the enemy. It's ridiculous. You know, everybody thinks differently. Of course they do. And if we could get some sort of unity of focus, we could change things very quickly. You know, and things are so simple, really. When you look at it, it's so simple. When you look at how the system could be run and you look at how the system is run. It makes no sense for it to be run this way. The only way it does make sense is if you are a criminal class who is running the world this way. And that's what's happening. You know, And everything I was saying earlier about free electricity and all this sort of stuff, people say, well, this is socialism. No, to me, it's common sense. It's common sense that if you're going to have a society that requires that you use these things, then these things should be supplied freely. And that's not socialism. It's just common sense. You know, it amazes me how people can't see this sort of stuff sometimes, but I don't know. I mean, I've got a different thinking process to a lot of people. I think in pictures. And when I look at the picture, it doesn't make sense having to pay for all these things. The picture doesn't work. You can't create the right image. You can't create anything that flows. You know, when I look at society and I look at government, I look at this whole system, I look at it in pictures. I think in pictures. I don't know how to explain it to people, but... I used to do little drawings of what the inside of my head looked like and what my thinking process looked like. You'll actually find some in the artwork section of the Crow House. But to me, when I look at the picture and the picture doesn't fit together, I mean, it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle. You can see where the pieces fit and they're all skew. They're all being put all over the place, higgledy-piggledy. They're being taped together with bits of tape and they don't fit in the spaces they're supposed to be. And when you rearrange things and you make the picture work, then everything just flows. And when I look at society, the picture doesn't work. And when I look at people's thought processes through the system and the processes they're attempting to undertake to find a way out of the system, again, the picture doesn't work. And to me, all you have to do is step back and look at the world as one picture. What does it look like as one thing? And look where the pieces should be to make the jigsaw puzzle work. And there it is. There's the answer. And to me, that's just how I think. And it makes perfect sense. And what I see as the major problem in the world is people's loss of self. People's failure to understand what they are, what this system is, because this system is just an idea that comes from the minds of people just like them. And they don't actually have to go along with any of this stuff. And if they were to ask the right questions and actually stand up for themselves and treat the people they were dealing with as actually being people, not the office that they're in, not the uniform that they're wearing, but just another guy, another man, another woman standing there talking to you, then there's a way out of this mess. There really is. But until we realize that what we're dealing with is people, all those figures of authority are just people, then we're not going to get anywhere. You know, and all the band-aids and all the movements and all the things that people try to find a way out of this system, if you're not factoring in the reality that your government is a criminal enterprise that is going to stop you doing anything that interferes with their hegemony, then you're not going to get anywhere. You've got to factor that into the equation. You've got to realize that you're dealing with a criminal class who wants to kill you. Your government wants to kill you. That's what they're doing, folks. That's what this whole 5G grid is about. That's what the active denial system is about. That's what the IOT is about. It's a prison. It's not there for your convenience. They're locking you down into a smart prison where they can monitor every single action that you do and discard you if you think in a way they don't like. And that is not government. That ceases to be anything that even resembles government. And look, we don't need government anyway. Government is a fiction. It's a thing we made up. You know, government should be there to govern infrastructure, not to govern people. You know, if we're going to have these institutions at all, let's face it, with a city, you need some sort of management, and that's called government. But it should be just a management role. It shouldn't be anything that manages your life. It should be there to manage the garbage disposal and make sure the roads work and the traffic lights are running properly, or whatever it is that we need for cities. But ultimately, we don't need these people anyway. 
You know, there is no valid form of authority that exists on this earth, ladies and gentlemen. There is no one who has a right of ownership over you, and that's just the way it is. You know, government is a fiction. We made it up. And the people that populate the offices, the halls of government, are all in abuse of the office that they hold. All this bombing of Syria and all the stuff that they're doing. One of the people in England and one of the people in the United States simply march to the government buildings and say, we want accountability. We want you to explain. We want you to show cause. Well, you should not be held in abuse of the office that you hold, Theresa May and Donald Trump. We want you to both explain for us all why you should not be prosecuted for your crimes right now or how any of your legislation is valid, how any of the things you are doing to us or any of the things you are doing to Syria are valid. You know, Theresa May gets up there and says, we have determined that this is legal. Of course you have, because you wrote it down that you could do it, you lying, warmongering wench. That's what you are. Child-killing psychopath is what you are, and you should be removed from office. And no, folks, this isn't 12D chess that's being played by the British and French governments to help Trump bomb Syria to bring the troops home. Think about what you're saying with this. It's ridiculous. What it is, is the same group of warmongering psychopaths out there trashing on the world the way they always do. And you've got Q sitting in the background saying, it's all good, folks. We got this. Don't do anything. It's all going to be great. You're going to be happy in November. In November, the smart grid will have you in its full sway. In November, the whole 5G grid will be rolled out. By 2020, the whole Internet of Things will be online. People simply aren't paying attention. They're going to sit back and eat popcorn and think, wow, it's great that Trump is bombing children in Syria to bring the troops home to take out the deep state. Think about what you're saying, ladies and gentlemen. Think about how you're being led. Go on. Type some questions to Q. Say, hey, Q, what about 5G? What about active denial? What about the IoT? What about the social crediting system? What is Donald Trump doing about any of this? What about the smart prison, the active denial grid that's being rolled out right around all of our cities right now? Why aren't you talking about this, Mr. Q? Why don't you ask him that, folks? Why don't you ask him how the French and British government are participating in this removal of the deep state? And then why don't you wake up to yourselves and go out and get to know people in your neighbourhood and stand up against the criminal class who is trying to kill you that is masquerading as government in your country? Because Q isn't going to save you if you're not prepared to stand up for yourselves. You hold the key to this prison. Every single person out there holds the key to this prison because the truth of the matter is that you actually have value. You don't have to do what you're told and the people that are sitting in the big chair milking all your wealth from you and paying themselves massive wages while they bomb children in foreign countries are a bunch of criminals that you could remove from power very easily if you were to unite as a community and simply stand up and call things out for what they are. You don't have to beat around the bush. You don't have to put the truth structured on a scaffold of lies and think that the people can't handle the truth. You just need to speak the truth. And everybody needs to do this. Now is the time for the human race to stand up for themselves or forget it. It's game over. If you're going to sit there and wait to be saved and wait for someone else to make the chess moves for you, then it's game over. And it always has been. You know, this whole world is a stage, folks, but you are a participating actor on this stage. You're not just someone in the audience. You are part of history yourself, and you can change things if you decide to participate in your life. And that doesn't mean going out and getting a job and building a house and getting a car and doing all these things. It means standing up for what you are. Because even the fact that you have to go and do all this stuff and work and get all this money and save all this stuff, this is rubbish. This is a slavery system. That is what keeps you distracted from paying attention to your life and realizing what you are as a human expression of creation, what we all are and what this system is and what these maggots that are running this world are actually doing. And I'll call them that because they are. They're psychopathic maggots. Theresa May is a psychopathic, warmongering maggot who needs to be removed from office and charged for her crimes, along with every other member of her government. And same with Donald Trump and his government as well. I don't care who they are. I don't care which politician they are. If they haven't spoken out against this system yet, if they haven't named things for what they are yet, then they are either part of the criminal cabal, they are compromised and should not be in that office, or they are too stupid to hold that office to begin with. 
and they need to be removed either way because they are simply not fit for the position that they hold. None of these politicians are. And if they were, the world would not be in the state that it's in and people would not be being subject to this smart prison being rolled out around them. And that is the simple fact of the matter. That is reality in stark black and white, ladies and gentlemen. The world's messed up and it's going to stay messed up until we decide we will fix it. And all we have to do to fix it is to stop complying with our own slavery. And really, folks, it should be easy to do this because the whole idea is just that. It's just an idea. The idea that you have to do what you're told. The idea that authority is real. The idea that you can be free and be a slave at the same time. The whole concept that you can be king of your own castle, but just a little guy who can't make change. But folks, everybody can make change. Everybody can make a difference in the world. You can create a ripple in your life, in your world, in your own community where you live that will ripple out and will affect the entire world. You'll be surprised how far a person's individual reach can actually go. I mean, look at me. Look what I've done. Look what I've managed to do by just speaking out and having a voice, making my voice heard, just speaking my mind, saying what I think and just offering my perspective. And I don't pretend to be some mega researcher or some influential person or some authority on anything. I don't have any particular niche that I wish to lock myself into. You know, I'm not someone that focuses on Palestine or Gaza or focuses on the money system or focuses on the Middle East or focuses on anything in particular. I'm just a person who looks at the world and offers a perspective on what I see. And I've reached so many people by doing that. And when you look at it, I mean, I'm just a social misfit. I'm a guitar player. I'm not anybody. I'm just a normal, everyday person, just a little person like everybody else. And I've managed to reach millions of people. Now, if you look at my two YouTube channels, my two YouTube channels combined have got almost 20 million views on my videos in the last 10 years. And my reach has gone out to so many people and it's reached so many areas that you wouldn't even think it has reached. And as a little bit of a, an evidence of that, folks, is how far one person can actually reach. The word cacistocracy, this is a word that, as I mentioned earlier, has been removed from the English language, and it's a word that I reintroduced into the English language about three years ago. No one ever used this word until I started reintroducing it and started using it. When I was at Anacapulco in February, Cynthia McKinney came up to me and she thanked me for using that word and for reintroducing her to that word and she said that she's now teaching that word in high school. And the other day I saw a tweet from John Brennan when he got sacked by Trump the other day and he used the word cacistocracy. He put in a tweet, your cacistocracy is collapsing after its lamentable journey. Now, he's using their word and saying that, well, Trump's got the cacistocracy and rah, 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 and he's trying to make it a one-sided affair. And really, it isn't that way at all. The entire government system is a cacistocracy. But the fact that he was using the word cacistocracy, ladies and gentlemen, this is John Brennan in the White House, is using the word cacistocracy, a word that was removed from the English language and was reintroduced by me about three years ago. So don't tell me that the mainstream doesn't listen to the independent media. And don't tell me that the politicians don't know what the independent media is thinking. Because just that tweet from John Brennan, that 100% confirms that my radio show Surviving the Matrix has now affected the vocabulary being used in the White House. So that's the type of reach that a single individual can have. And again, folks, I'm a nobody. I'm just a social misfit. I'm not anybody important at all. I'm just a guy who chose to speak out. And all the people who listen to the show or think that Max Egan is this special person, well, I'm not. I'm just like you. That's the thing. That's why I do it. And that's the example that I want to set, is that you don't have to be somebody to make a difference. Everybody has value. If you choose to make your voice heard, you can create ripples that will reach incredible places. I mean, here's me commenting on Iranian world news and now affecting dialogue in the White House. And I'm just a guitar player from Adelaide who likes to live in the forest and play guitar and smoke a bit of weed now and then. That's what I do. 
I'm not anybody special, folks. I'm just the same as you. I just chose to speak out. And that's the difference you can make if you chose to speak out. Think about it, folks. My voice has reached the White House. What would happen if there were 300 million of me saying these same things? Imagine how far our voices would reach. Imagine how far your voice would reach if you started speaking out and saying the right things and just speaking the truth. Don't try to exalt yourself and present yourself as some type of announcer or some guru or some authority or anything. Just speak the truth. Just say what you feel. Offer your opinion on stuff. Because that's all I ever do. I just offer you my opinion on stuff, my perspective. That's all anybody offers you is their perspective. Now, everybody's only got their perspective to offer, no matter what else they claim to be. All they have is their perspective based on the stuff they've looked at and what they've decided to make of it and what they are putting out there for you to consider. And that's all any of it is. And you can do that. You can reach millions of people by just deciding to speak the truth. And knowing what you are is the key to it all. Because once you know what you are, there's no problem with speaking the truth. There's no problem with offering your opinion on things because you can see it the way it is and your opinion's as valid as anybody else's. So why not say it? And that's all I've done. And look at the reach I've had. So don't think that you can't do this. Don't think that you are just a little person because you're not. You know, we're all just little people in that scheme of things. And in that scheme of things, I'm just a little person. And here's you listening to me and I've reached all these other people. So that's what a little person can do. So that should be confirmation for you that there are no little people. There's just people. Well, again, folks, we have reached that time of the evening when it is the end of the show. It seems to have gone by very quickly this evening. I don't know how it was for you, but it seems to have flown by for me. And I'm sorry if I appeared a little emotional during the show tonight, but, well, that's just the way I get when I discover that the government is bombing children again. It just seems to get my blood up. But, well, I'm human too, and I am vastly tired, overtired of war. I'm very sorry that I didn't get to bring you a show last week. I was extremely exhausted last week after the travelling. I had a very, very full couple of weeks before that kind of knuckled down and got a lot of work done. Got a lot of emails answered. I've still got a huge backlog, but I'm getting to them. I do assure you I will get to my emails. As I keep mentioning, I am speaking at AV9 in May. That will be from May 4th to May 8th. That is at Horwood House in the Midlands. Ian R. Crane's AV9. Always a good gig, folks, and I hope to see you there. I will also be speaking at a chemtrail conference in Virginia, at Virginia Beach, on May 26th. And I'll be speaking at Regeneration, which I think is on the weekend of June 1st. But you will find a banner for that on my website. We will find information about that. Thank you to all those supporters of the website and all those supporters of the show. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. Again, I could not do any of this if it wasn't for my Patreon supporters. Actually, if anyone could make a donation or anything, I really could use a substantial input of funds at the moment, folks, if anybody has any to spare. And anybody feels like making a one-time contribution, it would be much appreciated. I'll just put that out there. And thank you, thank you to all the response I had from people wanting to help me out with the MP3s and put my shows up there as podcasts all of that has been taken care of and i really do thank the people who put links up there you'll find links in the crow house radio archives to where you can download the podcast and you'll also find a link to the shows that are posted on soundcloud and again i do thank the people that have done that for me there's been a lot of requests as well for spanish versions of the radio show so i want to put that out there if anybody feels like translating my shows into spanish you could open up a YouTube channel, call it The Crow House Espanol, and you could just download my videos and replace the audio with your own voice speaking in Spanish and get the information out to the Spanish-speaking peoples. There's been a lot of requests for this, and I simply don't speak Spanish, so I'm not able to do it. But if someone believes they have a pretty good announcer's voice out there and they would like to take that on, I will give you absolute permission to download the shows. You won't have to do anything but replace the audio and you can just re-upload the shows with the same videos that I've used and get it out to, to the Spanish-speaking world. It would be a great thing. There's a huge amount of stamina in the Spanish people around the world. There really is. And 
They're a little bit confused about their government, a little bit confused about what's going on. I think that if they got the information in the right format, we could really motivate the Spanish world into action as well. And that's something that I just want to put out there, and hopefully someone may consider taking that on. But that is it for me, folks. I've completely run out of time. Thank you very much for joining me on the air today. It's always a pleasure to have your company, and I look forward to speaking to you again next week. Please take very good care until then. In La Cache.